So, welcome. Good afternoon. We're sight unseen. Uh, so recently, I had the opportunity to do some traveling in Asia. I was in Beijing, and I had both of these things. I had a smartphone and a travel guidebook. Now, I ended up relying on the travel guidebook more because I didn't have a data plan. The maps in here are tiny, and the street names were incorrect. I ended up getting lost. I got ripped off by some pedicab drivers. I ended up too late at the Forbidden City to get in. So it was a terrible experience. So I thought, there's got to be a better way. So I came up with Sight Unseen. Sight Unseen is a mobile application that dynamically generates walking tours and also features an offline mode where all the map data is pre-downloaded and cached to your phone so that you don't rely on, a, on an active data connection as you're traveling abroad. So this is current walking tours. It's static. It's one and done. With Sight Unseen, you'll basically have a wealth of walking tours based on the preferences that you have at that time. So what's a walking tour without great content? We're going to pull content from three different sources. First is open content sites such as Wikipedia and Wiki... Go back. Yeah, so the first, first uh, source is open sites like Wikipedia and Wiki Travel. Why pay $30 for a travel guidebook when there's plenty of great content available online for free? And then also we really wanted to have a local experience. So we're going to be crowdsourcing as well as relating on curated, travel, uh, curated tours uh, from experienced travel writers. So I'm from New York. Uh, tourists are really, really easy to spot. You know, these, they're looking at the maps, looking at the guidebooks, right? It's not cool. Next. So let's see some real uh, New Yorkers, right? Spot all the smartphones. <laughs> Next. <laughs> so if we're going to be competing with Lonely Planet, we're going to be competing for a slice of this pie. $110 million is the revenue for the top three companies. That's Let's Go, Forders, and Lonely Planet. The pie that we're really interested in, though, is this one. Mobile ad revenue, $3.3 billion, and local businesses spent $5.6 billion on Google Ads last year. So, not only do we think that Sight Unseen is a great tour guide app, it's also a really great advertising platform. As you're walking along, doing your tour, you'll be pu pushed relevant ads as you're walking past businesses. Uh, so, how are we going to build users? Easy. We're going to make it free. So we went out and did some consumer research yesterday, and pretty much everyone we talked to who had a smartphone said that they would pay for this app, uh, that they would use this app if it was for free. Even better was that 72% said that they would pay for it. So we'd have a premium version as well that would offer some features not included in the basic model. Our growth strategy is to start small, target a single neighborhood with a guerrilla marketing campaign, so I'm thinking flyers, stickers, posters, word of mouth, and then jump to another neighborhood and do it at Finitub until we have a city, and then go there to another destination. We would also be partnering uh, strategic partnerships with uh, other companies in the travel industry. Next. So this is a comparative matrix of us compared to some of the other competitors in the mobile app space, and uh, Sight Unseen has these advantages. So uh, since this is a startup weekend, we actually built a beta, and we're here to demo now. So here we see on the left, we built the app for Android. You start off with the picker screen, you set the length of time that you want to tour for, and you set some basic parameters, such as are you interested in sports, food and drinks. So this is a tour for USC, local gems, etc. Click up. And it generates a tour for you. You'll get a map, you'll get the points of interest on the screen. So the gold points are the points of interest, so Tommy Trojan and the like. And then all of the green points would be the sponsored sites, or the sponsored points of interest. And then we'd also have red gems for local kind of crowdsourced content. As you're going through a tour, GPS guided, you'll come across a site, you click on it, and you get some, uh, con some great content coming in from the top. And then also, we implemented augmented reality so that, furthermore, you don't get lost as you're taking your tour. You can just pull out your live camera and find where the next uh, point of interest is. I don't know if you guys can see here, but uh, it's pulling up a couple of buildings um, on campus. So if you're, if you're looking for your next point, and uh, maybe it's an address you've never heard of, it's a local gym, and it can point it out to you here. So with Sight Unseen, you just select what you're interested in. You select how long 
how much time you have to spend, click go, and you're on your way to discover sites on scene. Very, very cool. And big points from a presentation perspective that you guys actually used the projector to put the phone up there. Um, I like that. Talk, talk a little bit about, from an execution standpoint, um, the augmented reality. You're, you're obviously utilizing some APIs and some other services, or what's proprietary and what you've written? Okay, um, so there's obviously augmented reality engines out there. Um, this particular one's called Mixair. Mixar. Um, and uh, they let you integrate it into any application. They let you call it from any application. Uh, because this is Android, you're allowed to do things like that. Um, but it, uh, you can, um, so what we did really is we put the, these things into a database. And then we're, we integrated this uh, particular engine into our, in our code. And then we uh, just call it. And it brings up these points that we, we specified. We specified some data for them. And later we can put, you know, uh, this, this is a particular marker for this thing and, and things like that. So uh, that, that's, it, it, of course, along with the Google Maps APIs. And um, yeah, in Foursquare is actually where we're using full location data. Um, but we're thinking about using several other sources beyond that. Obviously, Wikipedia is a big one. So, um, it re kind of reminds me of the market space of when Google was kind of developing and it was really crowded and there was a lot of search engines and then they just did one kind of real clever thing right and certainly this kind of space is actually quite crowded. I get tons of pitches on this kind of stuff all the time um, and there's some really smart people working on it but I, w one other idea that came to mind was the idea of if you're on a walking tour and you have your, you, you could get a notification passively, so you're not constantly looking at your face, like, hey, you're within, tw you know, 20 meters of something you want to pay attention to. Mm -hmm. Did that idea come up during the, I think that would be a cool feature, but another, two other points I want to make. Um, initially, I was worried about this, the business model, but I like how you presented it here. My concern would be, is that something that you can also kind of API in all, all of the local stuff, or is that something you feel like you're going to have to totally build out from scratch? Well, some of it we'll have to build out. So. Uh, I know that Trebosa, they built a crawler to actually crawl sites like Wikipedia, we can travel to build that database. But because our growth strategy is really focused on a specific neighborhood at first, and we really want to bring that local experience, yeah. we're going to be going to people within the community yeah. to pull that information in first. There's pluses and minuses, right? It's more defensible because you're going to have to do the work yourself, and it'll, the quality will be better, but it's like that's a heck of a lot of work, right? As far as the passive notifications, it's actually already been implemented. It, cool. uh, it, it'll jump up at you if you pass by a local gym while you're walking to your, your next spot. And um, certainly, I, I think building things out locally is going to be more about getting that advertising revenue, whereas we already have that data aggregated. It's about what you show it. And have you paid enough for us to show it for you? <laughs> right, right. Yeah, I mean, if, it's, if we're focusing on a specific neighborhood, we can pretty easily just kind of crawl the internet and find as much information about that neighborhood as possible. And then I've also been thinking about doing partnerships with perhaps some, um, some people who know a lot about the neighborhood. For instance, I, I'm a big fan of uh, this author who wrote a, a walking tour guidebook for Los Feliz and some of the areas in Los East LA. He's actually a professor here. And I'm meeting about maybe partnering with him to allocate some content as well. He'd be one of the curators. Uh, so so, uh, so I, I think great job on the presentation. You hit, hit the big points, really communicated it. Uh, you set up, a, I think, a category that um, is a little bit outside of the, uh, the popular norm, actually. And uh, so, nice job, awesome demo, very cool looking product. Uh, so, so uh, you know, high marks. Uh, I think uh, it is, do either of you come from the travel industry or travel media industry? No. Because the, the, you know, the, your smaller pie, uh, you know, the, it is a completely different customer segment um, that buys Lonely Planet, Lonely Planet compared to, uh, you know, Let's Go, compared to photos, compared to, and, and I think understanding those, uh, the desires and expectations of each of the, the customers um, will be essential here. For some of them, this kind of a, an application will hold no, no interest at all. Mm -hmm. And for some, it'll be you know, revolutionary. Um, so, but I think it's really interesting. Uh, I think that the monetization piece is, is, um, is a little bit yet to be proven, uh, and distribution. Competing with folks who have massive, massive brands um, in this sector.
with probably worse solutions, the book, uh, but but it's uh, nonetheless that's the current behavior. We we, um, we talked to some local businesses in the area yesterday, and they actually really love the platform. But you know, as you can probably guess, like they're tightening their belts and they're not really looking to spend a lot of money unless we can actually prove the ROI. So that was the whole idea behind the free and try to build a user base first before you know, and then you know gather that data. Yeah, exactly. The ROI. We have location. That they're walking in front of the store. Uh, right right. And that's a value yeah. proposition that we can bring in, our ability to track the users in physical space. I think your R I'm sorry. I, I think your ROI would be pretty easy to prove. Uh, you can build the yellow pages behind it, and that's out there. So that people can go to, they, they see a restaurant they want, they can find it immediately and get there and make a reservation or whatever. <laughs> the real issue is how do you separate yourself from Google Earth where they show all these attractions on a map? And the, the way I've done a lot of traveling, when I travel, I look for the tidbits, a little tiny thing that says, to get into the Louvre, you don't wait with 3,000 people at nine in the morning. There's an entrance on the right side where you go downstairs and you wait for five minutes. You give people those kinds of tips. Like, you know, Europe on $5 a day has those tips in every city. If you can build that in, it takes you far, much farther than something like Google Earth, which shows you points of interest, and you click on it, and it shows you Wikipedia. I completely agree. I think um, extracting that local, locals-only information is really going to be a key part of this business. And the way that I see ourselves differentiating ourselves from Google would be that Google is really great in terms of identifying destinations, but this is kind of more about the journey kind of having a very vague idea of how you're going to be spending your afternoon, and then just giving some key points of metadata, pressing go, and then you have your itinerary all planned out for you. So Google Earth is great if you have a lot of time to do research, but this is something that I imagine being a little bit more ad hoc. We did some consumer research, and, and uh, people who travel tend to spend, uh, tend to allocate some free time during their travels. They don't plan the entire 100% of the day, every day. They only plan maybe about 50%. So we'd be competing for that extra 50%.